using stems in your DJ sets is becoming the new standard. And if you don't want to be left behind and sound like a beginner forever, you have to master this new style of DJ. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. If you're a new DJ, let me first explain why EQing is dead. Sort of. So usually DJs use EQs to isolate and highlight specific parts of their track like it's a cappella and instrumental. Put your hands up in the air. 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 But DJ Software now have an insane new feature which allows DJs to isolate specific elements of a track. Put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air. So in this video, we'll cover everything from getting started with stems on Recordbox DJ and Serato DJ with any DJ gear, to setting your software on the best settings, and to learning a couple of pro DJ techniques. Now, unfortunately, most people won't even reach the end of this video and even take action. So if you manage to actually listen to all these points, especially the application part, you'll be at a huge advantage to take your DJing to the next level. So let's start with Recordbox DJ. First things first, make sure you have the latest version of Recordbox DJ. Next, go to Preferences, then click Extensions. Then click Enable the Track Selection function. Now at the Deck section, you now have the Drum, Vocal, and Instrumental Part Mute buttons. So by default, these buttons enable you to mute specific parts of your track. If you would like these buttons to solo specific parts of your track, you can enable that as well. Now, how do we enable these functions on a Recordbox DJ controller? Well, usually for controllers other than the FLX10, you'll need to map these functions on your controller. But fortunately for you, since I'm a glutton for pain, I've painstakingly done the hard work of remapping the most popular DJ controllers for Recordbox DJ. You can simply download the mappings below along with the video installation guide to get stem functions on your Recordbox DJ controller. With the mapping installed, your Recordbox DJ controller can now do this. Getting started with stems on Serato DJ is a breeze and there are three important steps to ensure a seamless stem mixing experience. The first step is to enable stem mode on your controller. So to enable stem mode, make sure that you have the latest version of Serato DJ installed. Then, go to your settings and navigate to the DJ Preferences section. Here, select Replace Pad Mode with Stems and choose a pad mode you would like to replace. And now you can play with your track stems. The second step involves analyzing your tracks for stem mixing and there are two methods to do this. The first method involves analyzing your track stems in real time as you DJ. However, I only recommend using this method if you have a powerful laptop to ensure a smooth performance. To enable this feature in Serato DJ, go to your DJ preferences menu and select analyze stems. The second method which is also my preferred way of preparing stems is to analyze your tracks before DJing. To do this, simply drag the tracks you want to use for stem mixing to the stem crate. This ensures the smoothest stem mixing experience. Keep in mind that stem mixing on Serato DJ is both CPU and memory heavy. Therefore, when analyzing tracks for stem mixing, ensure that you have enough disk space as stem files are about 5 times the size of MP3s. Finally, 
The third step is to understand what these stem pad modes do. Now the top four buttons here mute a section of a track. The buttons below on the other hand smoothly echo and fade stems away. Among these buttons, the vocal echo and instrumental echo are the ones I always play with. Now that you've set up your software, it's time not to learn how to integrate stem mixing into your DJ sets like a pro. One of the biggest mistakes beginner DJs make is stem mixing with low quality audio. Since stem mixing involves extracting stems from your songs, if the original track already sounds bad, the extracted acapellas and instrumentals will sound even worse. So it's important to use high quality tracks. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. DJs typically use MP3 tracks, which can range in quality from 128 to 320 kbps. But when dealing with stems, it's ideal to use uncompressed, lossless audio files such as WAV files because they typically have a bitrate of 1411 kbps at 16 bits, which means they sound way superior to MP3s. Now, pro DJs like myself download all our high quality tracks from DJ record pools. And you can think of DJ Record Pools as huge libraries of music where DJs can download all the tracks they could ever use. And the DJ Record Pool I use is Crate Connect. And the main reason why is because Crate Connect offers the option to download tracks in the WAV format. So if you want to get a huge discount on Crate Connect and use stems at their best, use the coupon code DJ Carlo when you sign up on their site. When mixing stems, you are working with isolated elements of a song, and these individual elements may be in different keys. So it's incredibly important to mix in key to ensure a smooth, harmonious, and cohesive blend. While there are various methods to mix in key, in this section, I will focus on teaching you a technique that harnesses the power of your DJ software, making mixing in key easy and almost effortless. So let's start with Recordbox DJ. The first thing you want to do is analyze your tracks. This process has many benefits, but the most significant is that it allows your software to detect your track's key. Next, ensure that your track's keys are viewable in the browser section. So right click this section here and ensure that key is ticked. Once that's done, ensure master is highlighted. Next, go to your settings and under the view tab, next to key display format, ensure alphanumeric is selected. Then on the traffic light tab, ensure that related key 2 is selected. And now your browser is set to help you mix in key. Just load the song you want to DJ with and now all the songs that could sound harmonious with it will have their key section highlighted in green. So to mix in key, simply select any of those songs as your next song and start DJing or stem mixing away. <music> Moving on to Serato DJ. So like Recordbox DJ, the first thing you want to do is analyze your tracks. This process has many benefits, but the most significant is that it allows your software to detect your track's key. Next, ensure that your track's keys are viewable in the browser section. So right click this section here and ensure that key is selected. Next, go to your settings and under the library plus display tab, under the display tab, ensure Camelot is selected. Now with your browser section prepared, the next step is to grasp the fundamentals of mixing in key. The easiest way to do so is by mixing up, down, or between the keys of the current song. For example, if you want to mix a song in the key of 2A, then you can mix it with a song in the key of 1A, 2A, 2B, or 3A. Now let's load a song and press the key sort button. Since the current song's key is 2A, we can mix it with any of the songs here. A common problem I often encounter when mixing isolated vocal stems is that they are often weak in volume. 
A pro tip to address this is to increase the track's mid frequencies and activating a reverb or echo effect on it. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Stem mixing is an amazing tool for creating mashups on the fly, and my two favorite ways to use it involves proper song structure knowledge. So the first way I mash songs together is by mixing the next song's build-up section with the current song's chorus section. Now, in order to make this a mashup, it's ideal that the build-up section has a vocal part that we can isolate and layer over the current song's chorus. The first step would be to isolate the vocal section of the build-up in the next song. Once you reach the chorus section of the current song, trigger the isolated vocal section of the next song. As the tracks blend together, gradually isolate the stems of the current song. Another variation would be to mix the intro section of your next song with the chorus section of your current song. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Now that you've learned how to optimize the sound of your stems, and understand where to mix your tracks, it's time to delve into the art of showcasing and manipulating your acapellas to elevate the quality of your mashups. The first approach involves scratching, typically by combining the isolated vocal section of the next song with the beat of the current song. To achieve this, with the vocal section of your next song already isolated, trigger it when you reach the chorus section of your current song and then scratch the vocal section. <laughs> Once you're ready to blend, let the vocal section of your next song play out with the current song. And once you're ready to transition to the next song, gradually deactivate the current song stems. The second approach would be to play with the acapella using rolls. So I would typically beat roll the acapella, then echo the acapella away once a notable section in the current song is reached. And the third way would be to loop them, tighten them, and echo them out as you approach a drop section. But if you want to start doing loop tricks like this though, Then you guys need to check out this video next to really take your acapella manipulation to the next level.